Nemo Radio is on the air. A, B, C. A, always B, B, C. Closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. Come after me! I'm a man! I'm 40! All right, welcome back to another episode of Nemo Radio. We are going to pump you up. <laughs> I love it. Yep. I love it. I just went SNL 1980s Hans and Franz <laughs> for you and you alone. Jeff McMahon is joining me, the president and owner of Total Body Construction. He has yes. an incredible story. Um, you can get fit anywhere, anytime. I'm looking at your website right now, Jeff. It's insane, uh, the photo we have of you. Actually, I'm going to – we're on a Zoom call, so I'm going to share my screen for the people you watching. You're doing a flagpole? Watch this. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, that's Dude, me literally sideways. You're, like, literally hanging in the air sideways and being fully <laughs> calm. This is probably how Jeff normally does phone calls and business meetings. So Just Jeff, hanging. Uh, and I'll <laughs> – It's so incredible because the reason we met at Social Media Marketing World, and what I'm fascinated about with Jeff as we get into his story is he is kind of a fitness trainer to the entrepreneurial stars. So John Lee Dumas and Pat Flynn, and he has all these other individuals uh, with testimonials, which is really intriguing all in in and of itself is how you ended up winning them as clients. But what I'm really interested in is um, also talking about Jeff and how he, for everyone listening, he's taking a physical business of, you know, one-on-one personal training, fitness training, and taking it online. So we got a lot to unpack, my friend. Here's where right. I want to start. Give us kind of your backstory, where you started, why you have this passion for, for training and fitness. Kind of take us through your journey. Um, yeah, well, being when I was born, my mom had a lot of health issues, open heart surgery, heart, um, heart attack, stroke, um, you name it, brain cancer, or not brain cancer, breast cancer twice, um, dementia, everything. So wow. I always wanted to take care of my family and be healthy. So I wanted to be a surgeon, went to college, found out after two and a half years of pre-med that being red, green, blue, orange, colorblind, I wow. cannot be a surgeon. So I got into the um, rehab with my mom because of her stroke, she lost use less side of her body and found that I really had a passion and uh, desire for it. And back then, um, Google Hangouts was the thing to do. And she's like, is there any way that we could help my other stroke support friends do therapy at home? And I'm like, well, let's try this Google Hangout thing. And um, I was helping those people. And then randomly, Pat Flynn on his podcast talked about wanting to train for a triathlon. And so I emailed him. I remember it was Christmas Eve. And I was like, hey, Pat, listening to your show, um, I've trained a dozen uh Ironman triathletes, I'd love to train you virtually. Would you be interested? He goes, oh, that'd be awesome, dot, dot, dot. What's virtual training? (laughs) I was like, good point. I don't know. So um, we spent about nine months working together, crafting what it ended up being. Like we started with texting workouts and then sending video with texting. And then we sent, um, if he was going to LA Fitness and he also wanted to dunk a basketball. So we increased his vertical by over nine inches, which is huge when you're only five foot eight. So that's like, touching the rim versus touching the net and um, those things. And then we realized FaceTime or zoom, whichever people were easiest was, was like, it's like you're there. And so it was, it was like, Oh wow. You can watch my form. You can correct me. You can keep my pace going. You're holding me accountable. Cause now I have to be here for an appointment. I can't just blow it off or text you that I did it, but really didn't do it. So, um, the accounting piece, accountability piece is like, this would be amazing for people like me that work at home and have busy lives and kids and everything else. It's hard to find time to get to a gym. Now with the coronavirus, you don't even want to go to a gym. So <laughs> we're all enclosed um, in bubbles. Yeah. We yes. pretty much, <laughs> pretty much are like, I'm going to an NBA game in two weeks in Indianapolis and I don't even know if I'm allowed to go. Right. Like yeah, as we're recording this, as we're recording this video, and it's going to come out uh, in a few weeks. But yeah, the coronavirus is raging, and and it, it, more than ever, you know, people are kind of trapped. What's fascinating to me is you just hit on so many different things, and one of which is 
I love asking people why they got into what they do because you have this legitimate passion. It's not like you yeah. just jumped into a niche and were like, man, I like to work out. I want to make money. It was like, I have a heart for this. I have a heart for helping others. I remember Google Hangouts, by the way. Google Plus was the next big thing. I was sure of it. <laughs> Thank God I didn't have any stock or anything in it. But um, right. how, you know, as, let's do this because there's so many questions I want to ask you. And my audience is perfect for you. It's small business owners, coaches, consultants, solopreneurs. For the ones that you serve, what are the biggest struggles that you see them having with fitness when people come to you and want help kind of what is typically the frame of you know mind they're in or what are they asking you for help with i'm just curious yeah the the three things that they always ask is like you know a personal trainer is kind of like a hairstylist you know how you want your haircut to look but there's no way you know how to do it people know what they want their body to look like they see magazines they see themselves in the mirror but they don't know a with all the stuff out there on google what's true and what's not so they want guidance Second is with as busy lives as we have, especially if you have kids or whatever, getting to a gym, driving in traffic, convenience is a huge thing. So they want the convenience so they can do it on the road when they travel, they you know, can do it anywhere. And then the third piece is the accountability because with it, they are able to stick with it and then get results, which makes them happy. When they're happy, they can have confidence on stage. Like the biggest word I love with my people is confidence. Like when you see Pat Flynn or John, like John, like, damn, I look pretty ripped today. Like that confidence is a good thing because it's not always there for a lot of people. They hide, they don't want to be on camera anymore. They don't want to be out in public. They don't want to be up on stage because they're intimidated by their self-image. So when you have that confidence, businesses start taking off. You can do more things. You're out there in the world and it just helps out with everything. I I think that's such a a key point, Jeff, is confidence and self-esteem and self-worth. And like it or not, especially for people who are the face of a business, face of a brand, you know, entrepreneurs, coaches, consultants, you have to be out there now and you have mm-hmm. to be, you know, confident and be on camera. And if you're speaking on stage and that is a real barrier for a lot of people. So I love the fact that you know your audience, <laughs> like you really know these pain points for them. So obviously, you know, you also have kind of real life, you know, um, brick and mortar kind of office locations places where you train people what were the biggest challenges that you had taking a quote-unquote physical business online like what were the logistics Um, what were the roadblocks how did you kind of navigate this the biggest hurdles for it all is people think just because they go to a fifty thousand square foot gym that they're going to use every piece of equipment and you need every piece of equipment to get a great workout um So like the first myth is a stability ball and a set of dumbbells is pretty much everything you would use in a workout. And then I add in, you know, resistance band and a kettlebell for variety. But like those first two things for 30 bucks, you have a home gym. doesn't take up a lot of space. You're going to use it very often. It doesn't get, you know, shoved under a um, bed or used as a coat rack like a treadmill does. So um, the biggest thing is what equipment do you need? And then second, am I going to get the same results if, by staying home versus going to the gym? And the answer is yes, because in a 30 minute workout, being consistent all the time throughout the weeks will always breed better than, oh, I wanna go to the gym, but it's crappy outside. Oh, traffic's a nightmare, I got out of work late, so on and so forth. Now you have that consistency, so you will get the same results, if not more, because of that um, availability and convenience. I love that, and I think that's so true. And I think we live in this world I hear Gary Vaynerchuk talk about this all the time, but people are buying time now. You know, you're buying yes. time. And so DoorDash is bringing you food to save. I'm too lazy to go through the drive through now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have time to take 10 minutes to drive. Bring me the damn McDonald's or whatever it is. But, but we're also, I love what your business model is doing because it's eliminating all the excuses. It's removing all the excuses of, I don't have time. The weather's bad. Like, Literally, I don't have all the equipment. I need to buy a bunch of gear. So, like, you're really right. taking away all the resistance, which and, is awesome. Yeah, and with doing that, people can be in Puerto Rico, Switzerland, England, all the United States, Vancouver, Canada, you know, Philippines. I've had people all over because it's always the same problem for everyone across the world. What does – so I have a couple other questions I want to dive into before I forget. One is – how big of a challenge is mindset for your clients? 
do you have to deal with a lot of that? Is that not something trainers typically have to delve into is the whole self-image and mindset? How, how does that play into the physical part of things? Um, a bigger piece than most people realize. I did three separate courses. My degree is in pre-med and pre-farm that I'm dual certified in sports medicine and exercise science. But I also did a lot of certifications for the mindset piece, like the Tony Robbins and the, um, the, those kinds of scenarios because of allowing people to get past the fear. People don't want to stick with something because they don't think they're going to succeed at it. So they quit. So they lose 10 pounds, gain 20 back. You know, the boiling pot effect of you're like, oh, I'm so fat. I want to make a change. They do. They start to lose weight. I'm like, oh, I lost 20 pounds. I'm going to start eating pizza again. Oh, I lost, you know, I can reward myself with these cookies. And it goes right back up again. And just understanding those different things to explain to people, they're like, wow, that makes sense. You know, we always start off the assessment with what is your why and break that down five layers to, you know, it could be, you know, my why is to not have the health issues that my mom had, but also to be a good role model for my two sons. You know, I, no one wants their kids to grow up and be out of shape and made fun of and last but pick on the, you know, baseball team or whatever. Like you want good things for your kids. Well, you got to be the role model to show them that. And so a lot of different, the mindset piece, but then the other hurdle really is marketing sells the hell out of exercise is losing weight when in reality it's food. So everyone's like, oh, I'm working out with three times a week with you and this is great, but I'm not losing weight. And I'm like, because you don't lose weight on exercise. You tone up and have a stronger heart, but you lose weight by sleeping because you burn the most fat while you sleep and you lose weight by what goes in your mouth and then what <laughs> goes out the back of your body. <laughs> It's a family podcast. That's how you Come lose on now. Weight. That's how you lose weight. Well, and that's that's a key tip. And, and I mean, just you're totally exposing me, so I appreciate you. <laughs> no, <I'm laughs> no, no, no. But like, I've struggled my whole life with eating, and I'm one of those okay. people that it's you know uh, emotionally eating and everything else. And it's like I I'll work out like crazy and not lose any weight, and it's because I'm eating like garbage, you know. And that's just yeah. so true. And when then you get frustrated, then you'll stop. Then you just why quit. am I doing this? Then it's, it's like, why work. bother doing 45 minutes on elliptical? Well, right. I, I, I literally, this was never more crystallized for me. Sometimes you have to be outside looking in, and I was picking a friend up. They were coming out of the gym out of Lifetime with a huge chocolate chip ice cream stuffed cookie, which I don't know why Lifetime, Lifetime sells <laughs> like Dairy Queen level ice cream. Well, this, <laughs> this gal came out with this huge like um, ice cream sandwich, chocolate chip cookie. It's probably like 1,000 calories, right? All sugar. Oh. I'm like watching her and she gets in the car and I'm like, you just came out of lifetime. You're eating like all of that bat. Like, so it, it really is true. And <laughs> uh, so here's another question I want to ask you. Logistically, what do your sessions look like? Do people get creeped out? Do they feel weird that you're watching them? I mean, how do you put people at ease? Because for my audience too, one-on-one -on -one coaching, you know, even if it's not necessarily physical activity, you've got to put people at ease and make them feel comfortable and that you're a trusted kind of, you know, advisor. What's kind of your method for that when you work with someone one-on-one? -on -one? Well, um, I always do like I offer people two sessions. So the first one is an assessment where it's just, I go through muscle imbalances, what your goals are, what your heart rate is and answering questions on it. And that's helps break the ice of being behind the camera. Cause they can be in a living room in a spare bedroom. They don't need a lot of space for it. And a, enough space to have a yoga mat that's it and then the second session i'll be like all right i'll have a bottle of water and a towel and just any sort of space whether again it's the basement you know people work out in the garages people work out wherever um the second session is all about building rapport so i'm super sarcastic I'm from the east coast and like I, i'm not the jillian michaels drill sergeant so i want to make sure that you like hanging out with me and that you look forward to the session versus oh my god all i did was yell and he didn't answer my questions and like this is a waste of time you know i love answering questions i try to be as smart on the body as possible like when you're like oh i'm emotionally eating and you know sugar and that stuff it's not emotions it's dopamine which is your hormone for which sugar spikes up and so the way to counteract it is to do more um to do more green vegetables because it'll pl flush out all the toxins in your body and you won't need the the spiking of the dopamine because the green veggies will cover all the other um, side effects of it. So there's a lot of biohacking kind of things like that, that I bring to the table for my people versus your typical meathead trainer. That's like, let's bench 500 pounds. And you know, like, I'm not that guy. If you want that guy, 
call Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm sure he'll hook you up. But Hans and Franz, Hans and Franz <laughs> might still be available. <laughs> Remember that Dana, skit? What's that, Dana? Car- Dana Carvey, Carvey and Kevin Nealon. Google Kevin Hans Nealon. and Franz Saturday Night Live if you haven't seen it. It's it's just, they're the ultimate meathead train. Back when and SNL was good. That Back was yeah. SNL it's was it's good. been a while. <laughs> <laughs> but those are the glory I haven't days. watched this in 20 years, guys. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, no, that, I mean, that's that's where the comfort comes from is, you know, if you've ever FaceTimed family members or customers or clients before, it's, it's going to be the same thing. Um, but the beautiful thing is your home. So there is no one else looking at you. There is no one being awkward in the gym like, oh, do I look bad in this? Sh-? Like it's you, comfort of your own home. And you know, had a lot of people that do online dating, but they want to get in shape to do online dating. So they're not going to go to a gym and be at, they, they can do it at home. And like, wow, this is so much easier, you know, so on and so forth. Like I yeah, have a guy yeah. out in New Jersey for that particular reason. He wants to look good so he can go out and feel confident going out today. Again, the confidence thing. Yeah, I like that idea too of it's almost like having a, a private workout, a private facility, with someone that you can trust and let your guard down with. I mean, it's a brilliant, brilliant model. So what's kind of your approach running your own business? Well, I guess I want to know what have, what have been the biggest challenges for you? Because out, obviously you're out on your own. You've got to yeah. bring in clients. You've got to run a business, organize schedules, collect payments. You've got a very unique online model. What are the biggest challenges for you and kind of how have you overcome those? The biggest challenge is um, definitely people don't know what virtual training is, so educating the market. And then the second part is I'm awesome when it comes to health and wellness. I'm not all that great as a marketer per se. So I've used a bunch of different marketing companies or people or Facebook specialists or whatever, and they don't, none of them have really been able to capture what I do. So I'm still in that hunt of it. Like a lot of my business is word of mouth or being on podcasts, you know, been on John's and Pat's and um, Amy's and whoever um, podcast, but um, the actual blowing up and like helping other trainers do this so they can help more people at home. Like our, my goal at one, some point in my life is to help a million people virtually building up more trainers, letting this spread and be the next big thing. Cause like you have Peloton and that's great, but Peloton has no accountability and they're, you know, it's great. You can show up if you want to, but you're not going to. Like right. John Lee Dumas has Peloton and he always watches recorded ones. He never goes to a live one. Right, right. And so he's disciplined, luckily, and he's got me and then he goes right after me to Peloton, but a lot of people buy it and then never use it. Yeah, I mean, that's the age old thing with fitness and diet, food and equipment, and it just gathers dust, right? We feel we buy it because it makes us feel good at the time. And then we, though, like you said, I think the accountability is the key piece. What I really like, too, about your model that I think I've seen more and more of, and I heard a lot about this when we met at Social Media Marketing World, was people today are really craving connection and craving authenticity and engagement beyond just, like you said, watching a video or being part of a big group. And it feels like your approach, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this builds a lot of genuine, authentic connection, right? Yeah, and longevity. Pat's been with me for six years. John's been with me for five years. And not like they, like, I don't know if you are a Marvel fan, but Thor, Chris Hemsworth has a fitness app. And you're like, oh, look at this 90-day transformation. Well, the problem is like P90X and all those ones, once you go through it once, you're not going to go through it again. You're bored. You're like, I already did all this. Why am I going to repeat over? So then they did it. And then I'm assuming those people probably went right back to their old habits again. Because I know Pat Flynn did. He had every P90X. He's like, well, I already did this once. This is boring. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and that's kind of what makes for a good coach. I, I'm just relaying this to my market in my world where I've had the same business coach for almost a decade. And it's because he keeps growing and innovating and coming up with new ideas and creative thoughts and, you know, ways to help me grow my business. So we're not just doing the same stuff. Right. right. I, I mean, I think that makes a lot of sense. What, what other, I guess, I, I also want to give some advice for business owners. What are the what are the biggest pieces of advice you would give someone? You know, I know I, I've had a lot of trainers approach me about I want to grow my training business on LinkedIn, but even just individual coaches, right. consultants, people who do kind of what we do, high trust one on one, you know, engagement, whether it's fitness, coaching, mindset, okay. business advice. What's kind of your advice for those solopreneurs out there that want to grow a business and build a following? 
grow the business like monetarily or grow the business like have more energy and be in front of the camera? Like which side? You I, I think the actual sides? monetization and, and building a, a successful company. Okay. Um, for me, the, my model was to find someone of influence or so influencer marketing and provide value to them. Like I did Pat Flynn. I trained him for nine months for free mm-hmm. to prove what this was. So it wasn't a waste of his time. He didn't know he took a gamble on me. And, um, but then I could use his name of, Hey, John, I'm training with Pat. And he just got, you know, 110 out of 1200 people on um, Ironman. Would you want to, you know, are you into fitness? And he's like, Oh my God, Pat's one of my best friends. I would love to check this out. And then, you know, that, that just spirals off on its own. Um, and then the other part for me for growing the business really is to be out there on podcasts. Podcasts have been such a huge help to be on a show, get their audience to know about it, check me out, check out the um, idea of virtual training and just see what, what it can do. Because it has many facets beyond just this. Like a lady at Social Media Market World, her son had oxygen deprivation. So he's got mental issues at 19. He can't be in a public place because he'll have violence and hit. But when he's home... He can get a workout virtually and it's saving her and her husband from a whole heap of issues. So it's like so many different facets of helping people with virtual training. I love this stuff, Jeff. And I mean, that's such a brilliant model you used. It's the exact model I used, by the way, with LinkedIn. And so I went to John Lee Dumas. He didn't know me. And I said, can I rewrite your profile for free? If you, if you like it, you can use it. If you don't, no problem. I went and did the same thing with Chris Brogan and all these other individuals, again, to build a relationship, to bring value first. And I think that's yep. a model anyone in any industry can use and should use is say, hey, I know you've got an audience that I want to get in front of. I can't just go with my hand out, put me on your podcast, and I'll tell everyone how great I am. But I love the fact that you demonstrated your expertise. You demonstrated your ability to someone. You proved it knowing, hey, uh, the you know, reciprocity is going to kick in. And if this goes as well as I hope it will, Pat's going to introduce me not only to other A-list entrepreneurs, but have me on the show. He's the case study. We can talk about what we, we did with him and takeaways for his audience. And this is a brilliant model. And then also podcasting for everybody listening. This is uh, one of the best ways to get new leads is being a guest Nowadays, in front of yeah. people because they get to know you and like you and they hear you and like in this case, they're going to see you, Jeff, and like you're a normal, friendly guy. You're not like a muscle head, like you know? <laughs> right. you're I'm just not a regular dude, man. Anything. Just a yeah. regular dude trying to help people. And um, yeah, because a lot of people now, honestly, even my kids listen to podcasts. They have music too. I'm not going to say Spotify is gone, but they listen to podcasts at 15 and 12 years old. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's something where again, time is such an issue podcasting is great because you can do it while you're doing something else working i have a lot yeah. of people listen to me while they're working out and i'm like i better start shouting more to pump them up <laughs> get you through that next music. <laughs> yeah but fantastic stuff jeff mcmahon anything else we didn't cover that that you want to share that you think would be valuable for the audience um since a lot of your audience are coaches and stuff and they are their own business here's some energy tips to help people just have more energy and vibrance throughout the day um the top three is sleep anywhere seven and a half or nine hours of sleep. So those specific numbers, because that's your circadian rhythm. So seven and a half or nine hours. Be very intentional when you go to bed and, and when you wake up. Second, when you wake up, you're super dehydrated. So water with a slice of lemon will jumpstart your metabolism and flush out the toxins through your liver. So you'll wake up feeling more refreshed and then have coffee. Don't have coffee just to wake up like Folgers in your cup. You want to have the water first and then the coffee second. And then the third thing for energy is 10 minutes. If you don't have 10 minutes in a day to do a walk, to do a morning routine or something, you're ne- you need motion to create energy. So 10 minutes is the minimum for anybody. You are not busy enough that you can't fit in 10 minutes of just walking. Walking increases your endorphins, it moves your posture, strains out your spine. It does a whole many things. So those three things I always tell everyone because energy throughout for a business owner, you want to be on your A game, presenting new clients, you know, doing all the work, that kind of stuff. So those are just some tips that I want to throw out and help out with people. Dude, that's fantastic. You're kind of walking your talk here. You're bringing a ton of value. You're bringing a ton of expertise to people, which is awesome. All right. So let me tell people again where they can find Jeff McMahon. 
Virtual trainer to the stars. I like that. Sound wow. that. <laughs> so it's totalbodyconstruction.com, totalbodyconstruction.com. Also, obviously, Jeff is on LinkedIn. He's on other social media channels. Uh, I will link up to everything in the show notes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jeff, so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me, John. It's been an honor and a pleasure to be here, buddy.